I'd like to introduce you to John Nierensee. Born in Vienna, Austria, there he studied engineering and design. At age 22, he immigrated to the United States, landing in Philadelphia. From there, he was able to get an apprenticeship at the B&O Railroad in Baltimore, Maryland. He worked his way up to become an engineer there. So successful was he that he and a colleague opened up a side business of architecture and design to help Nierensee with his B&O projects. So why am I telling you this? Well, in the early 1850s, South Carolina decided they needed a new state house. The old one was too plain, uh, it was too small, and being made of wood, it was a fire trap. So they hired a firm to start construction on the new project, and that firm was promptly fired for concealment and misrepresentation. They contacted Nierensee, asked him to come down and evaluate what was done. After inspecting the project, he determined that both the workmanship and the materials used were of inferior quality. His recommendation? Tear it down, start all over again. In 1855, he was hired to do just that. He moved his family down to Columbia, began work on the new design, and then started building to that design. In 1861, when the war broke out, basically everything came to a screaming halt. There were no longer funds, manpower, or materials. He ends up joining the Confederate Army. He's given the rank of major, and he is made head engineer for the South Carolina State Militia. It will be his responsibility to design the earthworks to defend Columbia, and things aren't going to go very easy. For the longest time, Columbia thought they were immune to any kind of an attack, so nothing was being done. But with Sherman now down in Savannah, in late December, the decision was, what can we do and how quickly can we do it? So Governor McGrath contacts Nearnsey, wants to know, what do you need? I need 2,000 slaves. Mayor Goodwin has an idea. He'll write a letter. He'll publish it in the newspaper, and the letter will go out to all the people in the greater Columbia area, strongly requesting that they send all their male slaves and shovels and wagons to Columbia to help build the earthworks around the city. They are to arrive on January 9th. On January 9th, Nearnsey goes out to meet his workforce, and there are only 12 slaves. The reason for that is most slaves are already working on other projects throughout the state. So it wasn't because they didn't want to, it's because the slave labor wasn't available. But as those projects were completed, the slaves would be moving up to Columbia to help with the project. By February 12th, there were about 750 slaves working on the project, and they did a yeoman's job in such a short period of time. They completed a mile and a half of earthworks in one major section, which is about 350 feet long, big enough to support up to five pieces of artillery. And just over my right shoulder is that major section. You'll notice in front of it is a dry moat. The moat is about 20 feet across. It's five to seven feet deep. Behind it are the earthworks made of the dirt that was removed from the moat. It's about 15 feet wide at the base, five to seven feet tall, and it was very, very substantial. I'm standing on the Confederate side of the major section of earthworks. What you can appreciate through all the trees that downrange from this area where artillery probably was placed is the bridge and the state road. So any troops coming up the road to approach the bridge will be in the direct line of fire from the artillery. We know for sure that there are two pieces of Confederate artillery behind the breastworks. We're not clear about how many pieces of artillery were here, but Woods called up a total of five pieces. He called up a 20-pound Parrot, which is a huge field gun, much bigger than anything the Confederates had here. They only fired three rounds, but the after-action report said that they fired with great precision and good effect. They also brought in four 12-pounders. The 12-pounders didn't fire until the Confederate troops started their retreat. We're in another section of the earthworks. This is an area designed for infantry. The wall to the left is still substantial, about four feet tall. There's a little bit of a gully where the soldiers can step down into to reload their muskets, be out of harm's way, and then step up to the berm and fire again.